Welcome back. Let's move on to the project grid. Something that we see a lot of in websites, whether it's an image gallery or a list of your portfolio projects. Grid systems are very important and very common. And as we know, we learned the perfect way to create a grid, CSS grid, right? So let's see how this would look like in my ideal implementation. First, I want to go to the HTML page. And now let's make this a little bit bigger. In our project grid div, I know I want to use CSS grid, so I'm going to create a wrapper around this project grid. So I'm going to have a div. And this div will have a class of some properties that we'll add CSS to. And just to keep things blue the way they are, I'm going to give it the zone blue class that we have below. But we're going to make it a CSS grid, so I'm going to just say grid wrapper. And we can just remove the project grid. And in here, add a couple of sample little projects. If you remember in our solution file, I left for you a couple of images that you can just add like this so that we have some sort of a project grid. I'm not going to bore you with me typing all of that out because that's something that we've done before. I'm just going to copy and paste a div here with box zone. Box is a class that we haven't added yet, but we're going to create. These are going to be the grid items. We have zone, which again, something that we've already defined before, and our images. That's it. So if I save this and refresh, and let's refresh again. All right, this is absolutely hideous. Does not look pretty at all, but at least we have the images provided. But no employer is going to be impressed if they see this, right? So let's actually make this into a grid system. If we go back to the Style tab, let's add our grid here. And obviously, as the name suggests, when it comes to grids, CSS grids is the way to go. And there's many ways that we can lay things out, and it's something that we've already talked about in our CSS grid videos. So we're going to keep things simple. First is we want to actually say, hey, we're going to use CSS grid. So we're going to use the grid wrapper class that we created, which was this div that wraps all our projects. And we'll say display grid. We'll say that we want the grid gap to be 20 pixels. And then finally, the our favorite property that is grid template columns. And so everything is responsive. We'll say repeat auto fill. And we'll say that the min max will be, let's say, 350 pixels. So that is the minimum. And the maximum will be 1FR, so that it fills the entire page when it's really, really small. So that if I save this and refresh, all right, that still looks pretty hideous, doesn't it? And that's because our images are, well, they're pretty massive. And you see that they're also not all the same size, or they have different padding. So the way to just fix that quickly, and something that you'll see a lot with images, is to give them a width of 100%. In our case, we can just say box, because remember, each div has a box class that we haven't really said anything about, and then an image. So using our CSS selector knowledge, I can just say all children of box that are images, I want the width to be 100%. If I save and refresh, all right, that's perfect. Now you see that each image has 100% width. That is, it fills in the entire piece of the cart. And if I make this bigger and smaller, you see that it adjusts. Very, very cool, but still pretty ugly. But we have the CSS grid working. As you can see, as soon as it's less than 350 pixels, 
it changes the grid system. All right. So next, we want to work on the individual cards. That is, we want to have our box. And here, we don't really need to add any extra grid properties. I mean, we could if we want, but I like the way things look. I like everything being symmetrical. I want all the items in the grid to be the same. So in here, we can just add our simple CSS properties like, let's say, background color. And we'll just give it a color of, let's say, 444 so that we have this dark color. And we definitely don't want these images to be this big. So we'll give it a padding of 130 pixels and maybe some margin as well of 20 pixels. If I save and refresh, that's a lot better. And remember, because we said that the width of the image is 100%, it's going to try and fill the entire box. But because the box now has padding of 130, both at the top, the bottom, and to the left and right, the width is now just this part. So that looks a lot better. And if we look over here, we now have a completely responsive grid system. How cool is that? And how simple was that using CSS Grid? Luckily for us, the last thing we need to do is this footer. And because the footer is at the very bottom, it's just going to stay at the very bottom. The only thing that we might want to do is to make sure that the text is centered. So in our case, we can just say footer. And as you guessed, yes, it's text align, our best friend, center. If I refresh, oh, and make sure that I spell properly. If I save and refresh, well, that's not going to work because we should change our footer, which is div, to more of a semantic HTML tag of footer. Now, if I save and refresh, this is in the center. It looks great. Let's say zero to mastery because our layout is looking really nice. And there you have it. That wasn't that bad, was it? I mean, sure, the first time around, that's kind of difficult. But the principles that I've showed you here can be transferred to a lot of websites. I mean, this looks pretty ugly. You're not going to want to visit a website that looks like this. But when it comes to layout, everything is responsive and nice, right? And you can imagine yourself expanding on this and building a beautiful website. I wanted to show you this layout system because this is what I would use if I was building a website. I would start off with the HTML and create the layout that is responsive. Because after this, all I really need to do is add text, images, and colors, maybe some CSS styles to make it pretty, so that you can turn something like this that doesn't look good but has the layout implemented into something like this, which, I mean, doesn't look that great yet. But in the next video, I want to show you how, because we have the layout set up, we can convert our base layout project into something like this in less than five minutes. So let's do that in the next video.